What's up guys, Eli here, back for another new stuff video. Uh, this time I got another package yet again. This is the second time <laughs> from Scott Wilcox. Scott, thank you. I've been having a blast with this stuff so far. So uh, he was only going to send me originally, I think, two or three things. And of course he had to send me like six. So uh, let's take a look. And before we start, I'll just make this really quick. I've shown this before, but maybe some of you guys uh, haven't seen it. From a trade I did uh, a while back, I still have a couple things for sale. I think I only have one copy of each left, but this is this is awesome stuff. All three of these I have in my personal collection, and uh, it's going to stay that way. Uh, first off, we have Lampier with the Alchemy of Cursed Blood. This is a U.S. black metal band. They've been getting a ton of attention. If you haven't heard of them and you're into black metal, I'd be kind of surprised. This is the Lunar Apparitions version. Lunar Apparitions is the, the label I did a trade with. Then I've got Aversio Humanitatis with uh, Silent, Dweller, Silent Dwellers Live uh, 2020. Um, the band basically uh, played one of their albums, if I remember correctly. Played one of their albums just in the studio, I think it was during the pandemic, just one take, just blasted through it. It's, this is so killer. Uh, I actually didn't know what to expect at all, but this is some awesome Spanish black metal. Um, these are all sealed and brand new, by the way, so this comes with a patch as well. And then we've got Velo Mazir, another Spanish black metal band. I won't be able to pronounce the title, but I'll let you figure it out. Um, yeah, this is also killer. This is the last thing I had listened to, Two from these three, and so I expected, all right, one of these is probably going to bum me out. Well, they can't all be good. This is fucking awesome. More just crazy good Spanish black metal. Uh, this is a sleeper of an album, because I've never, I've never heard of them or seen anyone mention them, but it's, man, people are sleeping on this band, and I just, they shouldn't. So if you want uh, all three, like I said, I think this is all I have left. I might have, I might have one or two others lying around somewhere, but uh, if you just want to snag them all three, uh, 32 bucks, shipping included, so... Uh, yeah, straight 32 bucks. I'll ship them right to your house if you live in the U.S. A little bit more, obviously, if you're outside of the U.S. Uh, if you just want one of these, uh, $15, that's shipping included, so that's about 10 bucks uh, plus shipping. So I also still have uh, uh, shirts for the channel. I'm sh I've shown those a few times. I, I sold a couple more, um, but I still have a handful left. I think all I have left now at this point is uh, small, medium, and large. But if you want one of those, uh, 12 bucks shipped. I dropped the price on them because uh, I didn't want to you know, have a bunch left over. I've sold about half of them, so I still have a decent, uh, still have a good handful. So 12 bucks shipped anywhere in the U.S. So let me know if you guys need uh, any of those things, and we'll move on to the CDs that Scott sent me here. Now this was cool because there's some stuff here uh, that I have wanted to hear for a long time and just never have, you know, never pulled the trigger. And then there's just some stuff in here also that just intrigues me. So this is a nice little stack. Starting with Hour of 13 with Salt the Dead. This is a 2017 compilation. This has like a rare, it's called the Rare and the Unreleased. Um, I've known Hour of 13 for probably at least 10 years. Never had owned anything from them. And I always kind of have wanted to. So they've been active since 2003. They are like a traditional doom band if you like you know, your old school, you know, no frills, bare bones, doom metal. Uh, that's what you get here with Hour of 13. They're out of the U.S., uh, North Carolina, I think. Uh, mostly the work of a one Chad Davis. Uh, this is basically his band. He's had members kind of come and go. Uh, this band is also known for having uh, Phil Swanson, who is a <laughs> basically a U.S. doom metal luminary. He's he was just super, super busy in the early 2000s, just uh, cranking out all these just, just like modern Doom classic after modern Doom classic. I, I don't hear from him much lately, but I'm sure he's still out there doing something. Uh, traditional Doom at its best. Nice uh, occult-type lyrics, horror-themed, you know, witchcraft, all that cool stuff. It's good. Then from Mexico, we have Black Vomit with uh, the Faithful Servant. So Black Vomit, active from 1991 till around 2020 or so. This is their debut demo. Uh, originally came out in 95. This is a 2006 repress. So yeah, Black Metal out of Mexico. This came out on a label I'm actually familiar with. And it's called Azermita, uh, licensed by another label. <laughs> I can't read it, but... 
So early 90s Mexican black metal, I think, not to be presumptuous, but I think I have a, an idea what that'll sound like. Um, Mexico in the 90s, and even still, because a lot of their black metal just hasn't changed. A lot of it is, and I, I'm a fan of that country for black metal too, a lot of it is it's, it's ultra raw, um, sort of uh, Scandinavian influenced, I would say, but even more raw and more nasty. Uh, there's a lot of good Mexican black metal bands. If you weren't aware of that, uh, uh, hit, send me a message or something and I'll give you some recommendations because a lot of them are underrated and need to be heard by more people. So Black Vomit, yeah, looking forward to hearing this as uh, I've never heard it before. And another band I've always wanted to own something for, just never had pulled the trigger. We got Barbados uh, with their 2015 uh, fifth full length it, titled Straight Metal War. So Barbados formed in 1996 in Tokyo. Uh, it's mostly been a solo project of uh, Yasuyuki Suzuki, also known for uh, being an Abigail. And that came out on Hell's Headbangers, by the way, and that kind of gives you an idea, sort of, of what this sounds like. It's not super different from Abigail, yet it, does, it doesn't sound like a carbon copy by any means. But if you're a fan of Abigail, if you like Midnight, or even more so like um, stuff like Toxic Holocaust, uh, Barbados are definitely for you. In fact, a lot of those guys I just named are all friends. Joel Grind of Toxic Holocaust, friends with Barbados. Uh, a lot of them have played, with, you know, played on each other's albums and stuff like that. So, you know, black punk thrash, very old school sounding, high energy, uh, definitely just has that unmistakable Japanese sound in it. It's good stuff. I might not like Barbados as much as Abigail or, or Sabat, but uh, still very good. Then we have the 2005 uh, first live album by Evergrey, A Night to Remember. This is a double disc. It looks like a really, really nice set. So uh, I love Evergrey, by the way. Uh, they're a Swedish band from Gothenburg, formed in 1995, and they are basically a progressive metal. Their earlier stuff, you could probably even say progressive power metal. Uh, I think that would probably be more accurate. They Later on, they just became more of a progressive metal band. And when I say, you know, when, when I say prog metal, they aren't like you're super noodly. They don't sound like Dream Theater. Um, I, I don't want to say Dream Theater, you know, doesn't write songs, but Evergrey are a little bit more concise. They don't typically do 20-minute epics. They don't do, like, you know, super long, you know, three, four-minute guitar solo jam sessions and stuff like that. Not that I mind that kind of thing, because I really don't, depending on the band, but uh, Evergrey just don't do that. They're just really good musicians. Um, very unique sounding, too. They got a singer who, I will admit, I did not like this singer when I first heard him. Uh, he sounds almost like the heavy metal version of, like, Joe Cocker. He's got this smoky soulfulness, which is funny for, you know, a white dude out of fucking Sweden. You know, I mean, you, you're not going to expect the vocals. You might not like them, you know, on your, first, uh, on your first try. But don't write this band off based on that first try. Like, give them a chance. Give them a good go, because they are really fucking good. Amazing songwriters, amazing musicians they got a handful of albums at this point probably probably have 10 12 albums um i really really like their first like four or five albums and i will admit in the earlier 2000s they kind of they kind of like uh fucked up in my opinion they they straightened their music out they they weeded out most of the prog elements it was just like straight ahead stripped down heavy metal which i'm sure it was good for what it is but you know, I wanted to hear more of that technical prowess that they had earlier on. But I will say, they, I don't think they, those albums were super popular. And so their last three or four, maybe even like five albums at this point, are kind of a return to form. So it's good to see them come back because I really didn't like those, those mid-period albums. But yeah, anyone out there like Evergrey, if you're into prog metal and stuff like that, you know, they're a, a household name in that, uh, you know, in that genre. And the last two are a couple from Aventasia, a band that I do have one of their albums and I dig it. I've been wanting to get into more. So we got uh, Wicked Symphony from 2010. This is their fifth album. This came out on Nuclear Blast Records. I think I failed to say the labels of a lot of those, but you can look them up. Aventasia are known for being the brainchild of Tobias Samet uh, from Ed Guy. I think Tobias is 
guitarist in Ed Guy, or is he their singer? I can't remember. I actually don't know a whole lot about Ed Guy. I prefer Avantasia to Ed Guy. So what you have with Avantasia, you kind of have, what would you call it, uh, proggy power metal, um, very symphonic at times, very epic, and just very grand and huge. Um, yeah, what, what else can I say? Uh, so they're from Germany, and so I haven't heard this album. <laughs> I actually don't know what to, to expect. So Tobias, he kind of does, I, I want to say Tobias kind of took a, a cue from um, Arjun Anthony Lucasen from, uh, from Arion, because he kind of does that as well. Arion came first, though. But he does the same thing, like he gets tons of guest musicians on all his albums. Um, usually vocalists, yeah, usually vocalists, but uh, you know, he'll get other he'll get musicians and stuff too. Like just for an example, you got Russell Allen of Symphony Symphony X on vocals here, Jordan Land, uh, Michael Kiske of Halloween Halloween fame, Halloween, Tim Ripper Owens, I'm a fan, Klaus Mine from Scorpions. Um, yeah, and a couple other dudes that I am not familiar with. So this is kind of a fan favorite. This is, uh, you know, I have friends that like Avantage and they all seem to say really, really good things about this one. Then last, from 2011, I have this uh, massive live album, uh, Flying Opera. This is the first live album they ever did. I think it might be the only one. This thing is just massive. Around the world in 20 days. Um, from what I've read, this was only recorded at a few different locations. Not that there's anything wrong with that at all. I don't care. But there, yeah, four discs. Looks like it was a promo copy, um, which I don't care about at all either. Look at that. Oh, my God. So <laughs> there's two CDs and two DVDs, so you can watch it or listen or, or both. Um, I can just imagine what this is going to sound like live. A band this huge. I mean, it's going to be an experience for sure. Uh, so what do we have here exactly? So it says Disc 1, Avantasia Live Show. Uh, I think, okay, it's kind of what I expected, but uh, Disc 2, Around the World in 20 Days, the movie. So a uh, like a documentary or a making of. Uh, disc 3 and 4 are the live show on two CDs. So yeah, stoked to listen to this. It's going to be a blast, no doubt about that. Um, anyone into Avantasia out there? I... I I come and go with power metal, uh, I will admit. Um, I was a big power metal fan in like the earlier 2000s. And, you know, back when a lot of these bands were starting, there was early 2000s, saw a huge surge in bands playing like the uh, classic classic style, um, you know, skin, or not skin, maybe the classic style uh, European power metal. And it was just booming. I've kind of, I haven't really been paying attention. I don't know if that's still happening. I can't imagine you know, yeah, it, it probably lost some steam at some point, but it was really cool. Uh, there was a shitload of really good bands, and um, I, I do like power metal, so if anyone wants to recommend me some power metal, let's just say of the last, any power metal band from the last, let's just say like five years, what is the best, what's your favorite? Let me know, I will check them out, and I will report back. Anyways, we're all done. Scott, thank you yet again. Got a package coming your way soon, of course. And what do you guys think? Do you see anything you like? Um, there's kind of a something in here for everybody. I could talk about Evergrey all day. I know I haven't talked about them a ton on this channel, but uh, I really am a big fan. They are a really special, unique fucking band, and I can't recommend them enough to anyone who likes really any kind of heavy metal. I'm um, sure they're unique, and they're going to sound a little weird to you at first, you got to hang in there. You got to give them a chance. So, uh, as always, guys, thank you for stopping by. Louis says hello. And we'll talk soon. Fucking cheers.